Well, well, well. So you're interested in the CAE speaking exam. Well, this video is absolutely perfect for you then because today we're going to be having a look at part one of the exam and I'm going to be going through some tips and some things, you know, that you should and you shouldn't do and obviously things that you should bear in mind. The facts about this part of the exam, just in case you missed the last part of this video, the overview. This part is probably the easiest part, well it is the easiest part of the speaking exam for sure. It's only going to last two, three minutes max and its main aim is to make the candidates relax and to warm up a little bit you're going to be asked questions on a wide variety of topics there's no possible way that you can predict what you're going to get asked there are literally so many of them your daily life, interests, hobbies, travel, studies, work, sports your future um, ambitions, whatever, the weather, you name it transport, endless But it doesn't really matter what questions you get asked because you're always answering the same kind of way. So, for example, let's say the uh, examiner asks you, what do you do in your free time? And you reply, well, if I have time, I play football or hang out with my friends. So, you tell me, is that a good answer to the question? No, it's not. That's a terrible answer to the question. It's far too brief. Have you answered the question? Well, yeah, you have. But you've got to remember, this is an English exam. You've got 12 to 15 minutes to impress the examiner and show them exactly what you can do with your English. And that is a woeful answer. Now, let's compare the same question. Whereas, what do you do in your free time? Oh, hello there. This is more like it. Well, to be honest, I don't really have a lot of free time at the moment. However, when I do, I love relaxing watching films or series on television. If my friends are free, we go for a walk and we get something to eat, and occasionally we play football or go swimming. That is a good answer. It's an extended response. You've used some linking words. You've used some expressions. Well, to be honest, there's some expressions in there. And you've given an extended answer, which is good. You've shown off a lot of vocabulary and grammar. And that's going to score you high marks. So make sure you're expanding your answers. What else can you do to ensure that you score highly in your part one of the exam? Well, listen carefully to the questions. And I would say this is probably the next biggest mistake that students do because you've all been doing lots of practice test books and you've seen wow millions of questions you kinda and because you're stressed you kinda go on to autopilot so when the examiner asks you something you're like oh, okay yeah and you start answering the question but you haven't and if you haven't answered the question then you're obviously going to lose marks and this is very common so if you think, even for a second, that you've misheard the question or you're not sure if you've heard it well, ask the examiner. Sorry, could you repeat that for me? Make sure you're answering the right question. And this doesn't just go for this part of the exam. This goes right the way through. You don't lose marks for asking for clarification. The worst thing you can do is go, mm, I think they mean this, and then try answering. Because... If you're wrong, well, the examiner is just going to be like, yeah, they didn't know what this word meant or they misheard the question. Shame. I've already talked about this. Give extended responses. No short answers like, I don't know, or I don't have any free time, because that's just not going to make a good impression on the examiner or score you any marks whatsoever. Listen to your partner. Yes. Um... This is also kind of useful. Yes, this part isn't really a pair working uh, part, but at the same time, it is good when your partner is speaking, you know, to look at them and show you're listening. <laughs> 
a lot of candidates that I've seen in part one, the other person speaking and they're like, yeah. Having a good look around. Pay attention. Act like you're interested. Yeah, surely you can do that for 15 minutes. It's good manners and it's polite and perhaps, you know, you should also be, you know, it's meant to be a discussion, yeah? And you take part in a discussion kind of thing. So, yeah, even though it's not pair work, stay interested, look at your partner. Make eye contact with the examiner, another common thing. People are answering questions maybe because they're very shy or they're nervous and they're, you know, yeah, in my free time I... I uh, play football, I play lots of basketball, I'm talking to my hand, my hand is my friend. No, make eye contact with the examiner or people are looking out into the imaginary future. Oh, I see it all clearly in front. Look at the examiner, that's the person you're meant to be talking to. Yes, please. Be enthusiastic, another fatal mistake. The ex being an examiner, let me tell you, it's hardcore, it is tough work, it is tiring. So you want to see people who are enthusiastic, who want to speak. You don't want to see people coming into the exam going, uh, Hi, yeah, what's your name? Uh, Spiros, where are you from? Uh, Madrid. Uh, what do you do? Uh, play tennis. I like football. These kinds of answers are tragic and especially at the CAE level, you have absolutely no chance if you're answering or even acting like this. Yeah, so be enthusiastic. It makes a good impression on the examiners. So I hope this has given you something to think about. Yes, part one of the CAE speaking is the easiest part of the speaking exam, but still, there's an art to it and there's an art to impressing the examiners and scoring highly. I hope it's given you something to think about. If you want something nothing to do with speaking, check out Proficiency Smells. Lots of delicious, yummy English words that describe awful smells. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.